God for praise this morning. Just drawing us nearer. Drawing us nearer. Hallelujah. To the cross where thou hast died. Drawing us nearer to thy precious bleeding side. Hallelujah. In spite of, in fact, in light of all that he has done, that is why we are here to worship. That's why you can declare, here I am to worship, because of his precious bleeding side, because of all that he has done for us. God bless you. Good morning, New Jerusalem. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Come on, on this Palm Sunday morning, where the crowd cloud out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Here comes the king. We bless God this morning that we are together, that we are worshiping him together in spirit and in truth, some in the sanctuary and some online, but we are all together, all together, worshiping our God and blessing him for who he is and what he's done. And we are, we are on that journey to the cross. We are in this last week as we follow the steps of Jesus all the way to Calvary and beyond Calvary, all the way to the grave and beyond the grave, all the way to resurrection. Come on, next Sunday, we're gonna celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen, we are just glad to be in the number that can celebrate again. And so as we journey to the cross, we want to remind you we will be in services this week, uh, Holy Week services all week long at New Hope Baptist Church. We'll join in with the other churches in Virginia Beach as we celebrate the resurrection. Uh, we'll be at New Hope Baptist Church on Old Great Neck Road at 7 o'clock nightly. Um, and then on uh we will be preaching, I will be preaching on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and our praise team will be uh, ministering in song. And so we ask that you please come out. If you can't spare any other night, if you would please come out on Wednesday night and support. Amen. It's been a long time since we've been anywhere, y'all. <laughs> I know some are still not comfortable, but if you are not comfortable coming in person, join us online. We will be sharing the word online as well. And then again on Friday, on Good Friday, we will be ministering at the um, Second Cal. Calvary Baptist Church in Norfolk for the seven last sayings. So please, you, once again, you can join us online or you can join us in person. That service starts at 12 o'clock on Friday. And so it's going to be a busy week, but it's going to be a week where we walk along with Jesus on his journey to the cross. Amen. Don't ever take this week uh, lightly. This, this, is, this is that week. You know, he comes in on Sunday, but he's got to go through a whole lot before he gets to uh, that cross on Friday. And so we want to walk those steps right along with him so um, we're going to ask that you do that and when you leave today we're going to give you a letter uh, some of you may have got the same letter uh, via email but we're going to give you a printed letter to just in, encourage you this week as we journey to the cross and we'll also put in there a card for you to be able to invite somebody to come to church with you on next week amen and so there's there's only one card in that letter that means you I didn't ask you to invite ten, a whole lot of people you can but I want to make sure you invite at least one amen to come with you on next week and then if you need additional cards there are certainly those out there as well but we want to invite you that's next Sunday you can come at 8 or you can come at 10 we will have uh, services for our young people at both uh, uh, services as well so please come uh, and invite somebody else trust me somebody is waiting on you to invite them to service amen so just just go ahead this is what we've been practicing all uh, during our Bible study how many of you all enjoying Bible study Amen. Oh, Lord, that's weak. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to have to do better. But we are having a wonderful study in Bible study on um, learning how to have spiritual conversations so that you and we can learn to talk to anyone about God. And so this, this is a good practice for us to be able to invite somebody to service. Amen. All right. Well, listen, it's preaching time. That's what I came to do. Amen. And we're going to, we have two more sermons in our series, uh, Journey to the Cross, with, uh, Journey with Jesus, and uh, the, we're taking a look at the, gospel, at the Gospel of Mark, the miracles in the Gospel of Mark. And this morning we will be in Mark chapter 10, um, verse 46 through 52. Mark chapter 10, verse 46 through 52, as we continue our uh, Lenten sermon series. And it reads thusly, 
It says, then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Amen. As the Lord shall lead this morning, we want to speak on the topic of level up your faith. Level up your faith. Let's pray. God, we thank you this morning for this Palm Sunday morning. We thank you for the remembrance of all that you've done and all that you are going to do. We come now, God, as your disciples, as those who are are pilgrims on this journey with you. And we, God, we ask that you would touch our hearts this morning to hear your word. We're praying, God, that we would receive that which you've already prepared for us. God, and we pray that as we even leave this place today, that we too will walk along those steps that allows our faith to be leveled up. I pray for the anointing for preaching. God, that your word would go forth and not come back void. We claim victory and we claim it in Jesus name amen amen and amen and so this morning as we recognize and as we celebrate this Palm Sunday morning we arrive at this pivotal section of the gospel of Mark because it is here that Jesus and his disciples along with a large crowd of people are leaving Jericho and Jesus is preparing to make his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. After this, he will enter Jerusalem for the last time when he comes into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey and the throngs of people will cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, as they place the palm branches in his path. Jesus is heading to his last week of earthly ministry, but before he does that, there is one more miracle that he must perform. And so the healing of blind Bartimaeus is the last of the miracles that Jesus performs in the gospel of Mark. And it is the hinge between his three year earthly ministry and the final salvific work that he will now complete on the cross. And so the Gospel of Mark, it presents Jesus all along. We've watched him. Remember, we started out talking about how Mark uses this word immediately because he's taking us from event to event as Jesus performs a succession of miracles. And all of these miracles were to help us to understand and to see the divine presence and the divine power of God. And so this book of Mark presents us a lesson on growing our faith uh, that is necessary in the life of a disciple. And so along the way, we've been introduced to a whole lot of different people, and some of them have taken hold of this discipleship lesson. Some of them have seen their faith increase, and then there are some who did not. We didn't read about him, but there was the rich young ruler who couldn't grasp the lesson of of discipleship because when he was told that he would have to sell everything that he owned and give his money to the poor he chose money over the master there were even uh, his own disciples who had been with him this whole time James and John if you go back into the uh, chapter 10 and I would encourage you to read chapter 10 if you go back James and John when Jesus asked them the same question that he asked the blind Bartimaeus what would you have me do for you what they said to him was that they wanted to be able to sit on his right and on his left when he came into his kingdom. So they were more interested in power and position than service and sacrifice. 
person. And then there was even Peter who made the grand confession uh, just a few verses before that he knew that Jesus was the Messiah. But even Peter did not fully comprehend what it meant to be a disciple because later Peter uh, says he is the one that even though he says that he would follow him, he, he is the one that when, when the rubber really began to meet the road, it is Peter who said, I don't even know who this joker is. But here in these verses, in these verses, 46 through 52, we find a man who seems to understand what it means to be a disciple. We see someone who understands what it means to be a disciple and whose miracle story shows us how to level up our faith. Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, he shows us what the process of discipleship looks like. He takes us through the steps as he engages with the Messiah to follow him on the journey. Uh, he shows us a path to spiritual growth, and he shows us how to level up our faith. Because the truth is, we all need to grow in our walk with God. I don't care how long you've been walking with God, there is always another level to grow in God. And true disciples are committed to a spiritual growth. True disciples realize that in this journey with Jesus, Jesus, we will need to grow our faith. And so we're on a discipleship journey with Jesus. And blind Bartimaeus has some lessons for us this morning. And so our question this morning is, what can blind Bartimaeus teach us about spiritual growth and about growing in our faith? Well, he has many lessons. But the first one that he teaches us is, is that if we are, if we are going to grow spiritually and if we're going to level up our faith, we're one going to have to believe what we have heard about Jesus. You know, I thought about this point and I said, you know, I think I have preached this point probably three times in this series. It must be something about hearing the word of God that God wants to get across to us. And so the a, a truth is, like I said, it doesn't matter how, how if, you, if you've been walking with the Lord for 50 days or 50 years, it really doesn't matter. A key aspect of our growing in faith is to believe and to continue to believe what the Bible teaches about Jesus and then to act on that faith. Bartimaeus was a blind beggar and this was the season of Passover. And if you know anything about this, it means it was a festival that all of the Jewish males and, and their families had to go to. They were required to go to the Passover. And so what does blind Bartimaeus do? Blind Bartimaeus positions himself by the side of the road where thousands of people would travel from Jericho to Jerusalem to observe the Jewish Passover. In our time, he would be the man who has positioned himself at the stoplight with his may I get some money sign. Amen? Because he strategically puts himself in the place where he knows you cannot ignore him, right? He knows that you've got to come to this spot and you've got to stop and you will see him. And in some ways, that this was the whole idea, because you understand, this was in the days uh, before uh, social services, before social security. There was no disability check coming in at the end of the month. And so he needed the money to survive, and the Jews were obligated to give alms. And so this was a mutually beneficial arrangement. And so as he sat there, he knew a large crowd was coming, but not because he saw them, but because he heard them. <laughs> He felt the pounding of the feet on the path. He could smell the dust as it rose from their many footsteps. He could hear their conversation becoming louder as they approached and then just as quickly faded as they walked off into the distance. But then he sensed something different about this crowd. Perhaps there was a dignitary or two in the midst. And so he inquired as to what was going on and he was told that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. Now this man was blind so he had probably 
probably never seen Jesus before, but he had surely heard about him. He had heard about his works. He had heard about his miracles, and he somehow sensed that this was his moment. Jesus was passing by, and whether he knew it or not, this was the last time that Jesus would ever come through this way. For Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem and the cross, and blind Bartimaeus takes the initiative, and he cries out, Son of David, have mercy on me. He had never seen a blind eye open, but he had heard that this Jesus one time found a man in a temple one day who had arrived being led by others, but who left leaping with joy on his own. He had never seen a lame man made to walk, but he had heard about a lame man who after being touched by Jesus got up, took up his own mat and went on his way. He had never seen the wind cease. He he had never seen the waves stop billowing. Oh, but he had heard. He had heard about a, a, a man named Jesus who had caused even the winds and the waves to behave. See, we have to grow to the place where we are consistently placing our faith on what we have heard about God and the promises of God and the promises that are in God's word that we not dictate our outcomes based upon what we see and what we feel feel but on the word of God because the truth is you might see a mess but surely you have heard that God can turn a mess into a masterpiece I mean you might see chaos all around you but surely you have heard that God can bring order in the midst of confusion I know how it might feel you might feel like your mistakes disqualifies you for the blessing but have you heard that God is married to the backslider? Have you heard that if you confess your sins that he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness? I know it might feel like you're on a downward spiral. You might feel like you cannot recover, but have you heard that David declare, I would have fainted unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Did you hear that Weeping may endure for a night, but joy still comes in the morning. Perhaps you can't see your way out of it. You can't see your way out of the situation. Not enough of this and too much of that. But did you hear that if you trust the Lord and lean not to your own understanding, that God will direct your steps? I know that depression and anxiety and worry, they may have gripped you, but have you heard that if you cast your cares upon him, then God says, I'll keep you in perfect peace. See, we have to believe what we have heard about the promises of God. And then we have to act on what we've heard. We've got to act on those beliefs. We need to speak in faith based upon what you've heard. I mean, somebody needs to speak over your own life what you heard in the word. Some of us need to speak over our children's lives what we've heard in the word. We need to stop saying what we see and start speaking what you heard. Stop repeating how bad it looks. Stop repeating how bad it seems. We need to stop saying how bad the world is, how bad the society is and start speaking what you heard that God can change it all we need to make a declaration unto the Lord that today it is done today it can be turned around today my stretch has begun today is the day of salvation today you are the head and not the tail today you are the lender and not the borrower today you are above and not beneath today is the day of victory believe what you've heard about Jesus and speak that word over yourself because if we're going to grow spiritually and if we're going to level up our faith we're going to have to believe what Jesus said you got to believe what you heard but not only that not only should you believe what you've heard but if we're going to level up our faith we're going to have to learn how to be persistent y'all see it right there in the text you you have to have a commitment to keep moving towards God, regardless of what tries to get in your way. You see, this man heard Jesus coming. Text says he began to cry out for him. The people tried to hush him, 
but he persisted. He would not be discouraged. He would not be silenced. He would not be stopped. He would not stop seeking to have his needs met. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the more they tried to silence him, the more he cried out. Y'all understand, I want y'all to get this picture because uh, when I thought, when I read this text, all I could think about was this season in, 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 in our city of Virginia Beach, how, how in, this, in certain cities and localities, when the tourists come to town, how to try to get the, uh, the homeless people off the street and they try to put them somewhere else so that nobody sees where they are, so that the undesirable people will be invisible. I mean, you can hang out at the oceanfront all year long but when tourist season hits uh, you all got to go somewhere you got to be quiet you got to stay out of sight and so this kind of action that they were exhibiting towards Bartimaeus they ordered him to be quiet don't bother Jesus but he cried out even more loudly son of David have mercy on me and in this journey with Jesus to grow spiritually and to level up our faith we must always expect that there are going to be some obstacles in our way for this man, the obstacles to him getting to Jesus were those people in the crowd. They saw this man as just a nobody who was not worthy of the attention of the master. But this man had a real need, but they wanted to silence him. And I want you to know that that is still going on today. You got people with real needs, and rather than trying to help them, people will try to silence them. We've seen it in our country. We've experienced it with Me Too movement and the Black Lives Matter movement, and we're seeing it right now with the anti-CRT laws and the anti-voting right laws. Rather than do something about the injustice, rather than do something about the mistreatment, or rather than do something about systemic racism, they want you to be quiet. They want you to be silent. They want you to, they want to silence teachers so they can't even teach American history. They want to silence us so that you won't know uh, so that the truth about the inequities, the inequities that, that are baked into our society will not be known. They want you to be quiet and don't talk about your conditions. Don't talk about what needs to be addressed. And because of the fact of the matter is, nobody wants to sit by the side of the road with a sign. The fact that maybe I could get off the side of the road if my wages weren't so low that I could afford a house. Maybe I would get off the side of the road if somebody would lift this student loan debt up off of me. Maybe I could get off the side of the road if, and go back to school if the cost of childcare wasn't as much as a house payment. Maybe. But they want us to be quiet and not talk about what the real needs are. There are those, there are those who see the iniquities like this crowd saw this man. And this crowd expected him to just accept his lot in life and let Jesus pass by. They wanted him to give up on his hopes, give up on his dreams, give up on his aspirations to ever see again. They attempted to silence his demands for help, just as the demands for justice today are often silenced, saying that it is nothing more than whining and crying for attention. But this man would not be silenced. Growing spiritually, growing our faith means we can't let anybody else decide for us what Jesus will do for us. This man was persistent. And even though the folks told him it was no use, he kept on hollering. Even though the folks tell him to be quiet, he kept on speaking up. Even though the people told him that Jesus didn't have no time for him, he kept on trying to get Jesus' attention. And wouldn't you know it, that Jesus was on his way to fulfill his very mission for coming to the earth, but the work of heaven halted in that moment. Jesus is on his way to Calvary, y'all, but he stopped what he was doing. To hear one man's cry of, Lord, have mercy on me. The text says, Jesus stood still. He stood still, heaven halted, and responded to the cry of one blind man. And all I'm saying to you this morning, we got to learn how to be persistent. We got to learn how to call on him. Because there's always going to be a voice that says it can't be done. There's always going to be somebody that says there's no use of you trying. But don't let the world, don't let family, don't even let Christian fellowship, don't let nobody turn you around. Yeah. 
Don't let nobody stop you from getting what you need from Jesus. If you have to come to the altar every Sunday, come on to the altar. If you got to pray and fast every week, then pray and fast every week. If you got to cry out every day, then let nothing and nobody get in your way. We've got to be determined to reach Jesus because heaven halted and Jesus called the man to come to him. The response from heaven is not dependent upon the faith of the crowd. The crowd didn't think that Jesus would respond. Somebody's going to tell you that God can't do it. But God's response to you is not determined by what somebody else thinks. It is only dependent upon our faith and God's power. You don't have to be somebody in the eyes of the world for God to move on your behalf. To all, the Bible says to all who call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. It says ask and you will, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door shall be open. And so we have to resist our doubts. We have to overcome the obstacles that will rise up against us and keep on calling on the Lord. Keep on hollering out. I know it's been a long time. I know there are people telling you that it is no use. I know that people are telling you that God won't answer your prayer. I know that there are those who don't believe that you even deserve to have what you are asking for. But every time I preach this text, I love this portion of it because it gives me an opportunity to say to you, even though all of those people have said that to you, I want to know, have you tried this? Have you tried hollering yet? Have you tried hollering yet? Have you tried hollering? Have you, have you, have you hollered out to the Lord and declared, Lord, have mercy on me? I mean, I know what it looks like. I know what they said, but have you hollered yet? I know that some of you are too sophisticated to holler. I know that some of you feel like, oh, no, Pastor, I can't do that. But I wish I could get just five or ten people who would just holler out, who would holler out, Lord. Have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. I wish there was some people in the chat who would just write out, Lord, have mercy on me. Mercy suits my case. Hallelujah. Lord, come see about me. Lord, touch me. Lord, make a way for me. Sometimes you just got to holler. You got to holler at your boy, Jesus. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Be persistent. Be persistent. Because if we're going to level up our faith and grow spiritually, we're going to have to be persistent. But you're also going to have to do this. You're going to have to do what Bartimaeus did, and that is be honest about what you need. Be honest about what you need. See, when Jesus responded to the holler, he held up the whole procession. And that same call that we've heard about the whole time we preach the gospel of Mark, we see Jesus calling people, right? He's calling them and he's calling them not to do something first, but he's calling you first to just come be with me, right? And so he calls Bartimaeus. He says, bring him to me. It is a call to be with Jesus, to come into his presence. I know sometimes we're always concerned about what we're going to do for Jesus, but we are human beings. <laughs> he wants us to be with him first. And once after we have been with him, then he will send us to what he wants us to do. And so he calls Bartimaeus and Bartimaeus responds to the call. And the text says that he cast off his garment and he ran to Jesus. I don't want y'all to miss the symbolism that he, he ran, that, 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 that the symbolism of this garment being cast off. Because in those days, his garment would be like his security blanket. It would have functioned as his tent cover at night, his shelter from the sun during the day. It would have been the coat for his cold and his blanket in the wintertime. And he quickly, I want y'all to see this, he quickly cast it aside in order to get to Jesus. The casting of the garment was evidence that his faith had grown. He was casting aside anything that would hinder him from getting to Jesus. But it was also the symbol that he was ready for transformation. To throw that garment aside was it was the symbol of his blindness it was the symbol of his poverty it was the symbol of his brokenness and to say I what he was saying was 
I ain't going to need this no more. He says, I'm not going to need this. You can take this cardboard sign that asking for money and I can throw it away in the trash can. I don't need this crutch in order to walk. I don't need this bottle to make it through the day. I don't need that drug to make me have peace. I'm going to latch on to Jesus. Leveling up your faith means that you have to let go of some things that you were depending on before. To cast your garment uh, means that you've got to let go of every weight and anything that so easily entangles you. It means you might have to let go of some people. You might have to let go of some places, some things that you've leaned on on the past, some things that have propped you up in the past. You might have to let go of those things and latch on to Jesus. You're going to have to cast aside your garment, cast aside that thing that you depended on before in order to run towards Jesus. And then Jesus asked him the question that we all must answer. He asked him, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want? Jesus was asking him this question. What do you really want? What do you really want? I mean, do you want something to just make you comfortable I mean, do you want me to just give you some alms? Do you want me to just give you some money and go on about my way? <laughs> do you want a temporary fix? Do you want to be propped up until the next major crowd comes along? Jesus may not have come by, but there was a crowd coming by the next time they had a major a Jewish holiday. Or are you asking for something that only Jesus can give? Are you asking for something that only God can do? And Bart answered simply, I want the recovery of my sight. He says, I want to see again. And the Greek word here that's used for sight indicates that at one time he used to could see. But now he is blind. And in this moment, he was asking for what he believed that only Jesus, the Messiah, had the power to do in his life. Because leveling up our faith is to have the courage to ask God for what we really need, to be honest with God, for what you really need. What we really need from God are the things that only God can do. See, Bart believed that he could, he could, Bart believed that Jesus could make him see again. And that God would help him recover what he had lost. That God would help him reclaim a vibrant life. He believed that his life would be different as a result of this encounter. He believed that God could do what he asked. And so we must trust in the power and the authority of God to do the miraculous in our lives. What I'm saying to you is, is that doctors can treat an illness, but only God can heal. See, 12-step programs can help you manage your addictions, but only God has the power to take the taste of the substance right out of your mouth. A good therapist and good medications can help us deal with depression and anxiety, but only God has the power to heal a broken spirit. Only God can ease the burdens of our heart. Only God can give you peace in the midst of a storm. We, we can make efforts at changing, but only God can create a right spirit within us. We got to learn how to ask for the things that only God can do. Ask the thing, and it, because that is what you really need. See, growing spiritually and leveling up our faith means that we get honest with ourselves. We get honest and we realize that the truth is that no matter how desperate our situation is, if we cry out to Jesus, he will hear us. He will hear our cry. And if we call out to Jesus in faith, he will help us. We got to learn how to tell God what you really need. I wish you'd turn to your neighbor and say, what do you really need? You got to write it in the chat. What do you really need? Be honest about what you really need. Tell God what you really need. Ask for what only God can do, and then watch God work. <laughs> watch God work. God will do it, just like he did it in the life of Bartimaeus. Because Bartimaeus is walking this journey out. He, he, he could have asked for a whole lot of things, but he cast aside what he'd held on before. He ran to Jesus and told him, what I really need is something only you can do. Give me my sight. 
because he knew that if he was going to grow spiritually, if he was going to, his faith was going to increase, he realized that that's what he needed to do. But there's one last thing that Bartimaeus did in order to show us how to level up our faith. And that is after Jesus healed him, Bartimaeus was told to go about his way, but Bartimaeus did not do it. Bartimaeus followed behind Jesus Christ. If we're going to level up our faith, we must be willing to follow Christ. Text says that Bartimaeus cried out. Lord did exactly what he asked him to do. He opened his eyes and he immediately, I love that, that word again, immediately he received his sight. He said, you're free to go on your way, but Bartimaeus didn't go. He followed Jesus Christ down the road. He became a disciple of Jesus Christ. I know I've shared it with you before, but the word disciple, it means to follow. That's all it means. I know we try to make it mean a lot, but disciple means follow, to follow Jesus Christ. And so in that moment, even though Jesus, he's healed now. I mean, he could go dancing if he wanted to. I mean, he could go find him a, a new girlfriend. I mean, he could go do a whole lot of stuff that he ain't been able to do. Come on, somebody. I mean, I once was blind, but now I see. Jesus said, you free to go on your way. But he did not. He followed behind Jesus Christ because he realized that if I'm going to grow in my faith, then I have to make a commitment to follow Jesus Christ. To follow him indicates a willingness to learn more about him. Anybody who could do what you just did, I need to be walking behind you. Anybody who can open up blind eyes, I need to be walking and learning from you. To follow him shows that, that, you are, that he was willing to lead him wherever he would go. And that's what we've got to learn. We've got to understand that uh, there's a whole lot of people we can follow, but it, the only one that really matters is Jesus Christ. Oh, I know you got followers and you got folk you follow, but the only one that really matters is following Jesus Christ. Follow Jesus all the way. And we have to follow him, be committed to follow him. You do realize he was on his way to Jerusalem. Because if you follow him, the road might get bumpy. The road might get rocky. But if you follow him, you will never be alone. Because the path he chooses may not always be the way that you would have gone. But trust that he knows the way that we should take. When we make up our minds that we're going to go with him, then we have to understand that he is going to give us every provision that we need for the journey. When we decide that if we are going to go with him all the way when we follow him we will have what we need if you make up in your mind that where he leads you will follow your path may not always be predictable but your faith will be stretched your spiritual character will be challenged and your spiritual fruit will be produced this Lenten season we've talked about this almost 40 days now that our goal, for real, has been to level up, to level up our faith, to level up our commitment, to level up our love, to level up our service, to level up our prayer lives, to level up our understanding of the word. That's what Lenten is all about. And the miracle stories of Mark have helped us to see that regardless of who we are, regardless of what condition our lives are in, that God will help us to level up. And it can happen now because a lot can happen in 40 days. It just requires that you take the challenge to change. That you remember that on the other side of the storm, that you will remember that you will recall what God has done and that you will go forth with your testimony and your word. Like the demoniac that was cured from the cemetery, he kept showing up changed. He kept showing up changed. We got to learn that as we go forth, we just got to keep going back and remembering what God has done and keep showing up with your testimony. Keep showing up brand new. Keep showing up healed. Keep showing up clothed and in your right mind. Keep showing up and the impact of your faith can have an effect on not just your life but the world. The impact of what God does for you will have an impact. It has an effect on other people as well because somebody is watching you. 
Somebody is watching you. Somebody is watching your interaction with God. You go to church, you watch church, you worship online, you go to church every week. I want to see the impact of Christ in your life. And the, the, what they see is your testimony. What they see is what they know that if God did it for you, then God can do it for them. And so what we've got to learn is, is that, when, at, that as we follow Christ, then others are going to be following us and following us as we follow Christ. Somebody's going to be encouraged by your story. Somebody needs you to fulfill your assignment because their destiny is connected to you. Somebody will hear the word of God because of you. That's why we've got to keep going. We got to keep on following Christ. We can't start out on the journey and turn around. We got to keep moving on because we are knowing that even like Jesus, every round is going high and higher. You got to learn how to keep on keeping on. Sometimes it's going to feel like uh, they're putting palms down as cushion for your steps uh, and sometimes it's going to feel like folk are plotting against you. But no matter what you're doing, as long as you're following Jesus, I need to tell you to just keep on going. Sometimes it's going to feel like uh, you don't see any fruit on the fig tree, but keep on going. Sometimes it's going to feel like folk are lying on you, but keep on going. Sometimes they're going to falsely accuse you, but keep on going. Sometimes it's going to look like and feel like they strung you up on a cross, but keep on going. I need you to level up because Good Friday will come. But how many of you know that even though Good Friday comes, Good Fridays are always followed by early Sunday mornings. And on early Sunday mornings, hallelujah, it is the time of celebration because we realize that we have overcome, that we have the victory. And so I want to encourage you, church, level up. Level up your faith. Level up your service. Level up your prayer life. Level up. Hallelujah. Because God wants to use your life. God wants to use my life. God wants to use us as a testimony to somebody else of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Come on, give God a praise right there. Can we sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have decided to follow Jesus. Yes. I have decided to follow Jesus. Come on, have you decided? I have decided, decided to follow Jesus. No turning back? No turning back. Yes. No turning back. Come on, I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. The no turning back. No turning back. Hey. No turning back. Come on, have you made that commitment this morning? I have decided. Come on, I have decided to follow Jesus. I decided a long time ago. I have decided. I faced obstacles coming and going. No turning back. Hallelujah. No turning back. Yeah, I have. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus.
got to know there's going to be a cross before you. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for encouraging us to keep on keeping on. God, as we have journeyed through this Lenten season, we have done it with the help of your spirit. God, we thank you for empowering us. We thank you for the lessons that you're teaching us. And even as we go through this last week of the journey with Jesus to the cross, we pray, God, that you continue to reveal yourself to us. Lord, let us uh, uh, see the change in us, Lord, that you want to make. Because, God, we just want to be who you want us to be. We just want to do what you want us to do. We want you to be pleased with our lives. We want to be testimonies to the world of what, a, what God can do. What God can do in the life of, of a nobody. You can turn us into a testimony for the world. So God, we thank you today. We thank you for this word, Lord. Encourage us to keep on keeping on as we listen to your word and move in obedience to your command. God, I pray that if there's one under the sound of my voice in the sanctuary or online, God, who has not made that confession, who has not recognized that they cannot do this on their own, that today, God, today would be the turnaround day. Today would be the day where they recognize that they need you. They need to follow after you. God, that you would speak to their heart, speak to their mind, and let them make that confession today. That if they, The word says that they believe in their heart, Lord, make a confession with their mouth. That you raised Jesus from the dead, that you are Lord. You said that they would be saved. And so, God, we pray today that that confession shall be made. If there's one that's looking for a church home, God, we pray that if you're leading them in this place, God, that you would yet now unction their heart and their spirit, God, to move forward on your direction. We ask these things now in the mighty, matchless, marvelous name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, it's Palm Sunday. We, we're going to do a Hosanna praise. Amen. Come on, Hosanna. 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 We bless the name of the Lord. He is great and greatly to be praised. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, as we prepare to go down from this place, we'll remind you that our ushers will, um, that our ushers will dismiss you by row. Amen. But before we go, we're going to have closing prayer. I'm going to ask Tamakwa if you'd come. We want to pray for you. If there's anyone else that would like special prayer today, just please come and space yourself out right here at the altar. And we're going to pray uh, one for another. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else, please stand all over the sanctuary. Anyone else like special prayer this morning as we journey with Jesus all the way to the cross. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, Hosanna, blessed be the rock.
the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, because you are our God. And Lord, whatever we need you to be, you are. You are the great I am. God, and so we come today and we ask God that you would meet every need that has been presented at this altar today. God, I pray that you would touch these individuals from the top of their heads to the very soles of their feet. God, their heart's desire, what they're crying out to you today, God. We're believing you, Lord. Not only have you heard it, but because they're asking according to your will, you have answered, and they shall have that which they have petitioned. We thank you, God, that you're blessing them and they're going out even as you've blessed them and they're coming in. I thank you, God, that your hand is around them. You are surrounding them and keeping them through all hurt, harm, and danger. Whatever they have to face in the next seven days, God, I thank you that they are not going alone. I thank you that you're yet now working out situations. You're yet now answering questions. You're yet now providing solutions. You're yet now making ways out of no ways. You're yet now calming our anxious minds. And we thank you, God, because you are able to do it. And we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise for working these situations out on our behalf. God, we stretch our hands to you and we cry out, Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us today, oh God. Mercy suits our case. And so we thank you now for meeting every need. And we thank you that it is done. What we have asked for, we declare victory in Jesus' name. We cancel every assignment of the enemy every time he tries to raise his head and tell us that it cannot be done. We silence every voice that, that, that speaks against your word and we stand on the promises of God which are yea and amen. We declare today that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We believe today, God, that your word is true and we will believe we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Thank you for healing bodies. Thank you for watching over us through procedures. Thank you, God, for opening doors of opportunity. Thank you for the one who's looking for a new job, that the new job is here, not coming already here. I thank you, God, that the ones who are looking for housing, God, is already being provided. I thank you for the provision that's being made and put into our bank account. I thank you, God, because everything you have promised shall come to pass. And we stand on your word and we declare it to be true. We go down from this place, God, with a hosanna on our lips. We go down from this place praising you and determined to follow after you. We are determined to walk after you, to walk like you walk, to talk like you talk, to be your disciples in this earth. God, give us the strength. Give us the courage. Give us the tenacity to keep on keeping on. And in the end, God, we'll be so careful to give your name all the praise, all the glory, and and all the honor that is due unto you. God, we thank you now. And we cry out, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy on us. Hallelujah. Have mercy on us, oh God. As we go down from this place, mercy. Mercy is what we ask for. And we claim it in the mighty matchless name of Jesus the Christ. And now to him who's able <laughs> to keep us from falling. To the only wise God our Savior. Be glory and majesty and dominion and power. Henceforth and forevermore. And all who agree said have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us today. But listen, you may have just listened to that message and you're saying to yourself, oh, I am encouraged, but I still would like for someone to pray with me. If you need prayer this morning, if you want somebody to agree with you in prayer, type prayer in the comments or text prayer to the number that is on your screen and someone will reach out to you. If you listen to the message today and after hearing it, you're saying to yourself, you know what? I realize that I need a savior. I realize that I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. If that's you today, we invite you to, to text the word salvation to the number that's on the screen or write salvation in the comments. Because the Bible tells us that if we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says that we will be saved. 
And so you can be saved today simply by making that confession. But type the word salvation or text the word salvation and someone will reach out to you. You may be saying, I, I, I have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I love the Lord, but I need a church home. And I want to invite you, no matter where you are, you may be near or you may be far. I want to invite you this morning, if you're looking for a church home, to become a member of New Jerusalem Ministries. We would love to have you be a citizen here with us. If that's you, you're looking for a church home, simply text the word HOME to the number that is on the screen or write home in the comments and someone will reach out to you. Again, we're so grateful that you joined us today and we pray that you have a glorious day in the Lord, that you continue to walk in his love and continue to bask in his joy. God bless you.